I'm an associate professor in the Neuroscience Institute in the Department of Biological Sciences. Basal ganglia are a collection of brain areas that are kind of along the base of the brain, and they're very important for the refinement of actions. So, for example, if I want to lift my arm, the basal ganglia can shape how quickly I do that movement, how far the arm goes. Dysfunction of the basal ganglia often results in disorders associated with motor control. So Parkinson's disease is one of the primary examples. My lab is interested in the motor symptoms of Parkinson's disease and they arise due to dysfunction of circuits in the basal ganglia. So my lab uses mice because there have been a number of advances in genetic and recombinant DNA technology. This technique is called optogenetics, so we can essentially turn on and off the activity of specific populations of cells by flashing light. We can apply this technique in a mouse model of Parkinson's disease, and doing this in mice produces the same constellation of motor deficits that are seen in human patients, this allows us to invasively go look at exactly what's breaking down, what's changing about the neurons, what's changing about the circuits in this disease state, and then how can we design interventions to restore movement to this, in this Parkinsonian mouse model. And we discovered that if we intervene in the, at the right neurons in the right way, we can induce a long-lasting therapeutic recovery of movement in our Parkinson's mouse model. This is really exciting because currently existing technologies work as long as the treatment is applied, but there are no long-lasting after effects. So the ability to persistently rescue the circuit is a really exciting advance and suggests that there may be a way to train the brain out of its disease state. And in fact, one of the things that stemmed out of our research has been that we've been able to collaborate with a number of neurosurgeons, and they're very interested in starting to tune existing treatments or essentially stimulation paradigms to mimic what we're doing in our mice. And so we hope that in the near future, the work that we've done through this project is gonna translate into a therapy that can be applied in humans in the near future. I heard about the Brain Initiative from some of my senior colleagues here at Carnegie Mellon. The Brain Initiative has had a huge impact on my career. It's actually the first R01 that I ever got. I've been having trouble getting my R01 funded through more traditional study sections. And I think that the broader expertise of the Brain Initiative and its real emphasis on combining innovative technology with foundational circuit discovery is really what I needed to gain traction and it's allowed us to do the cutting edge research that we had been trying to do. The advice that I would give to scientists that are thinking about applying for funding from the Brain Initiative, uh, if you have a good idea, try it, don't be intimidated.